why this strategy profile is in Ash equilibrium. All right. Well, how do we understand or check if something is Nash equilibrium or not? Well, all we have to do is just check best responding. Well, put arrows uh, according to this strategy profiles. It says player one is going to play U here and then H here and then capital U here. All right. Very good. This is the strategy of player one. And then player two is going to play left. Um, so this is the strategy profile. So if you look at these arrows, clearly payoff of player one, u h u comma l is equal to two. Well, the question is, can he achieve anything better? By player one, I mean, can he achieve any payoff higher than two by changing this strategy. Don't forget his strategy, he has eight strategies. So that means he can change UHU by any one of those. All right. And the question is, is any one of those other strategies will bring him more than two payoff? Well, if you like, you can go one by one. How so? Check the payoff if he, for example, plays DHU comma L. Uh, check DTU comma L. Check uh, DHD comma L. I mean, th this is a, a sort of a terrible exercise, but well, I mean, it is a correct way of solving this question. But you know what? There's also a smart way of solving this question. So, I mean, check those payoffs and see that all of them are e either equal to two or less than two. They are never higher than two. So that means UHU is the best response to L. But there's a smarter way. How so? Well, the, there's only one way, one payoff that would bring player one higher payoff than two, which is three, right? Again, we are looking only pure strategies. Um, so therefore, player one, uh, I mean, he can get three, but the question is, can he get three given that his opponent is playing left? No way. Why not? Well, whatever player one does here, eventually it's going to come down to the second player's choice. And unless she is choosing R, there's no way player one can get three. And she is, player two is not choosing R, she is playing L. So given that player two is playing L, the payoff player one is going to end up, if he plays D instead of U, is either one or zero. Both are worse than two. So you know what? UHU is the best response to L. Very good. I also need to check UHU is the best response to L. Uh, by the way, I, I did sort of a lot of blah, blah. I didn't write them, but all those blah, blah are important explanations. Okay. Um, so now I need to check that the second player is also best responding the first player. So um, here the utility of the player two, if she plays L, what is her utility? It's zero. Question is, is L best response for player two, given that the first guy is playing this? What would be your answer? Anybody? Yes. yes, okay. Why yes? No matter what his strategy is, the outcome will be 2 0 because player one plays you in the first decision node. And finishes the game. Exactly. So the game, according to this strategy, player one is going to finish the game by playing you. And so player two will never have the opportunity to choose his or her actions or strategy. So whatever she chooses, it really is irrelevant. The payoff she's going to get at the end is going to be zero. So therefore, L is the best response to this strategy. Yes, R is also best response, but fine. Remember, all I need to check is whether this is the best response. So I, I, I don't care all the best response strategies. All I care is, is L a best response to this? The answer is yes. And the explanation is as we gave. There's no way player two can change his or her payoff. And previously we already answered, is UHU best response to L? And the answer was yes. 
And so therefore, each player is best responding to each other. And hence, this must be a Nash equilibrium. Clear? All right. Well, let's check one more and then I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll jump to another game. So let's check this one. UT, well, that one is exactly the same logic, right? I mean, UT, UL. Once again, player two is best responding. L is the best response for player two, given that the first guy is playing UT, U. Why is that? Well, because the first guy is finishing the game. So both L and R, in fact, best response. Well, what, have, what about player one, is this a best response for player one? If the second guy is playing left and the answer is playing U is actually giving him two payoffs. If he played D, given that player two is playing left, his payoff will be either one, one, I mean one or zero. Both of them are worse than two payoff. And hence UTU is also best response for player one, hence, uh, uh, U T U uh, comma L is also a Nash equilibrium. Are they SP and E? No, they are not SP and E. Well, why is that? The answer is simple because here the strategy U T U says player two one. I'm sorry, is going to play U here. But let's ask. Uh, I know player one is going to finish here. And so I shouldn't worry about here, but don't forget this idea of backward induction of subgame perfect Nash is that every subgame, even though it's not reached, should be played optimally, wisely. So the question is, is U the optimal or wise strategy here? No, because U is going to bring player one zero payoff, but D would bring him three. So this is kind of a, uh, what we call non-credible threat. He, he's actually threatening the other guy by playing you here. But in fact, he will never play you. I mean, if he's not stupid or something, he will never play you here. He will definitely go for D. So therefore, this UTU is a Nash equilibrium, but it's not really subgame perfect Nash. Okay? 